This video is sponsored by Raycon and will begin right after a short skit. Is this thing on? Are we live? Hi there, Mr. Banner. Thank you so much for coming on the show today. Well, uh, <laughs> thank you for having me. I'm sorry, uh, what show was this for again? Never mind that. As we can all agree, this year has been pretty wild in pretty much every way. But as we're now in the final month, we're now approaching the holidays. And I trust you know what that means. Presents? <laughs> That's right. As a delver of technology and a person considered to be in the loop, I wanted to ask you what advice you might have for those viewers at home who might be shopping right now. That's a great question. Um, mm -hmm. When I'm shopping for somebody, I normally take into account whether mm -hmm. that person can mm -hmm. use it. And so for this year, um, I'm buying right. a lot of my friends the new Raycon Everyday E25 earbuds. Did you just randomly pull those out of your pocket? Oh, I never go anywhere without my Raycon. Mm -hmm. I see, I see. Well, why would these Everyday E25 earbuds be a good choice for this year's holiday gift. Oh, that's easy. In the first place, they're only about half the cost of other premium wireless earbuds on the market. You mm -hmm. can use them anytime, anywhere, mm -hmm. uh, right. work or play. Oh, and they fit super comfortably in your ear. Would you say that due to their diminutive pricing, they jipped the quality of the audio a little bit? Oh, absolutely not. They mm. actually have brand new bass boosting technology. Mm -hmm. And when you combine mm -hmm. that with their noise mm -hmm. isolating fit mm -hmm. and their seamless mm -hmm. Bluetooth right. mm -hmm. pairing. Mm -hmm. yep. I'm sorry, could yep. you mm -hmm. stop that right. please? I'm going to be frank with you, Bandit. I want one. I want it bad, and I want it now. What do I have to do to get one? Tell me! Well, on top of their already diminutive pricing, Raycon is actually being super generous for the holidays and offering my viewers 15% off their purchase. All you have to do is click the link in the description below or go to www.buyraycon.com slash MNB. I'm sorry, are you seeing this? Yeah, that's weird. I have no idea what's going on there. Anyway, this offer's only around for a limited amount of time, so be sure to check today. Check today? Who, who are you talking to? Is Oh my goodness, was there a camera there this whole time? If you were to say that Breath of the Wild is a game full of mystery and intrigue, you'd be making an enormous understatement. The land of Hyrule is chock full of secrets and easter eggs and references that for way over three years now have been just about everything the Zelda fanbase has been talking about and theorizing over. One of the biggest of these mysteries, both figuratively and literally, would be the mystery of Mount Agat. If you haven't heard of this elusive mountain, allow me to summarize what exactly is so mysterious and elusive about it. You see, you can't climb this mountain, even though its rock walls are made of climbable material. You can't fly over it, and you can't use Rivali's Gale to jump on top of it. And what is the one thing preventing players from discovering just what the Gerudo Desert looks like from all the way on top of this peak? Why, it's none other than Nintendo themselves. No matter what you do, if you stray a bit too close to the peak of the mountain, and sometimes too close to the mountain itself, you will be stopped from making any further upwards progress by hitting a fourth wall breaking invisible boundary. And what's more is the invisible wall is actually intricately molded around this mountain, extending from the Gerudo Desert to the surface of the mountain all the way out over the giant western abyss at the edge of the map, meaning this is no accident. Nintendo very clearly wanted to prevent players from reaching this particular peak at any cost. Which brings me to the icy cold question, what in the the world is on top of Mount Agat? The answer is nothing. Well, nothing but potential. There's nothing physically on the top of Mount Agat except for that same flat snowy area we can clearly see from the map. But it is this nothing that is located on top of the mountain that is the very reason we are unable to explore the area. Let me explain what I mean by this. You see, logically speaking, there's only one reason why we wouldn't be able to scale the mountain in the final cut of the game. And that would be because Nintendo doesn't want players to see the area up close, right? But I would say that this is not because of what we might see up there, but because of what we won't see. And if we saw that there was in fact nothing up there, that would break the game's canon or story in some way. Take the edge of the Gerudo desert for instance. If you run in one direction for very long, eventually you'll be prevented from going any further in the exact same manner as the peak of Mount Agat. Did Link somehow fail to possess the ability to continue walking in that direction? No, he didn't, but obviously this was because this is the end of the intended explorable map of Breath of the Wild. And if you were to break through this invisible boundary, as many have before, you will discover that there is quite literally nothing outside the boundaries. Well, nothing except for an ocean, but in this case it's understood that, canonically speaking, Outside the boundaries of Hyrule and across the water is, well, the rest of the world. It is an understood fact that Hyrule is
is not the only kingdom in the world of Zelda games and the potential for other countries and civilizations is actually a pretty popular topic amongst fans. The same concept is true for like nearly every open world game in existence. Just because the playable world ends at a certain point doesn't mean the in-game universe ends there. My point here is that this sort of thing, an invisible wall, is placed by developers to prevent players from experiencing something that would break canon and therefore the immersion of the game. Applying this logic to the peak of Mount Agat, that must mean that even though we know there's not physically anything up there, currently at least, the reason why we still can't explore the area is because something is supposed to be up there. Something that Nintendo doesn't want players to be able to see the area without. So the question is now not really what's up there, but what is supposed to be up there. The answer is, well, that it's impossible to know for sure because we're talking about what's supposed to be up there knowing there's nothing there currently. But we can make some pretty educated guesses though, which is why I felt like making a video about this topic in the first place. So okay, Nintendo specifically blocked off an already completed part of the map because of what isn't on the peak just yet. That much we've already broken down logically and discussed. But the reason why they haven't unblocked it yet is, I believe, because they do plan on opening up the area. I mean, that's the only thing that makes sense because otherwise it would wouldn't matter and they would have opened it up already, right? And yet there are no more DLC packs that are going to be available for Breath of the Wild. So how exactly would opening this area up with new content work exactly? Well as some fans will remember, Aonuma actually said in an interview with Kotaku that the thought process behind deciding to make a straight up official sequel to the game instead of just more DLC was born from there being too many ideas for DLC. And not only were there too many ideas, but some ideas were big enough to change the world of Hyrule in ways that only a sequel can handle. Since we know that Breath of the Wild 2 will be taking place in the same Hyrule from the original game, this tells me that the answer to Mount Agat's mystery most likely lies in their future plans for the world of Breath of the Wild, also known as Breath of the Wild 2. So here the question evolves yet again. What do we know about Breath of the Wild 2 that might shed light on what we know about Mount Agat? At first glance, you might think that a lonely snowy peak has nothing in common with the cavern scene in the trailer to the sequel, but they may have more in common than you think, location-wise. Okay, I know what you're thinking. Am I really about to talk about where the Breath of the Wild 2 trailer could actually be taking place a whole year and a half after the trailer released and everyone already covered it? Yes, I am, and I'm not done yet, so let's keep going. In the first place, the caverns are undoubtedly tied to the Gerudo, and by extension the Gerudo area because of two reasons. One being the corpse of Ganondorf, who is a male Gerudo. Although I guess for those of you who are still not convinced that this is Ganondorf, it is undoubtedly at least an individual adorned with Gerudo symbols and jewelry. And the second connection being the hieroglyphic-like legends on the wall that are probably depicting a Gerudo warrior, most likely Ganondorf. Already we have some pretty strong ties to the Gerudo culture and history, meaning the area that the trailer takes place in could be located somewhere in the Gerudo region. And the caverns also feature architecture that was immediately recognized as Zonai by the fanbase. Yes, I'm also referencing the Zonai, and I'm actually not joking. I'm really digging a hole, aren't I? Anyway, the Gerudo Highlands which Mount Agat is located in actually is not that far from a labyrinth, which is most likely a giant piece of Zonai architecture as well. So here we are, with two very unique and specific Hyrulean cultures both very different from one another, yet strangely referenced in the same cavern. And the only region in the entire map of Hyrule that could connect those two is the Gerudo Highlands mountain range. Intriguing, yes, but still there's not much to go off of in order to conclude what the mountain's secret might be. So let's keep digging. Another clue we can gather from the trailer is that Link and Zelda aren't alone. They brought a big companion beast of some sort to help carry their luggage. And firewood. And lots of it. Let me ask you this, what is the point of carrying all that firewood? I mean all at once. Knowing Link and seeing the axe sitting right there beside the firewood, or heck just the master's sword, if they were adventuring around in the open world they'd never be too far from some good old trees that Link could cut down to make a fire. The only reason they'd stockpile this much at a time would be because they packed that way. Because they knew they wouldn't be able to get firewood for a long time. It's as if they knew they were heading into a long, unknown cavern complex, away from any supplies like trees and wanted to be prepared. This probably means that whatever they're traversing in this trailer is much, much larger than just some ordinary cave. I mean, there are complete structures down here, like walls and bridges, implying that 
that at one point in time, people were down here, and for extended periods of time too. Could it be that this cavern our heroes are exploring is actually the ruins of what was once some massive underground civilization? Now, whether this civilization was the ancient Zonai tribe, or Gerudo, or some mixture of both, the point that I'm actually trying to make is that this underground space is massive, unknowingly so. But where is it located? There's one more piece of evidence that I want to go over that may just tie all of this together. Mount Agat is not the only unclimbable mountain in Breath of the Wild. There is actually another unnamed mountain that you cannot reach the top of. And go figure, it's in the same region but on the opposite side. This unnamed yet oddly shaped mountain is the one in question. Everything about its inability to be climbed is exactly similar to Mount Agat, although it's even more squared off in appearance and isn't covered in snow as it doesn't sit quite as high. At this point though, it is painfully obvious that Nintendo has some plans in mind for these peaks, and I'm about to explain what I think it is. What if the Twin Peaks actually hold an entrance and an exit to and from the giant underground cavern that Link and Zelda explore in the sequel? I theorized in a previous video that the entrance could be the Yiga Clan hideout pit, but what about these mountain peaks? They're obviously connected to each other in both region and their inability to be climbed, and they're the only non-explorable places located on the map in the entirety of Hyrule. Think about it, where else would Link and Zelda have entered the caverns from? And where else should Ganondorf, the Gerudo King of Legend, be located? And I know it sounds crazy, but doesn't the entire mountain range in the Gerudo Highlands seem a bit strange to you? A bit too perfectly angled and squared off? A bit too man-made? Who knows what secrets could be hiding underneath the peaks? And that is my theory regarding the mystery of Mount Agat and its unnamed little cousin. But what do you guys think? Could it be something else entirely, or simply a scrapped idea from Nintendo that will never be followed up on? Let me know what you think in the comments below. Thank you so very much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please consider leaving a like below to get it spread around in the cold wasteland of YouTube, and consider subscribing to the channel so you can stick around for the next one. Huge thanks as always to my fun, tabulous supporters who are, in my opinion, quite simply the best holiday gifts I could ever ask for. Say hello to Akai Flora and Cindy H, who recently joined the ranks of my elite. If you're interested in helping the next video come to life, or maybe just bring an old bandit a Christmas miracle, please feel free to check out the join button below or follow the links in the description to find out how. Also down there are links to my social media pages, so come check out what I'm thinking about on Twitter. That's all for this one, folks. So as always, I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. And please remember, stay warm out there. This is Mass Nintendo Bandit, signing out. Peace!